Hello guys, welcome. Now in this tutorial, we are manually going to create an external service using this open API spec. Okay, so I have created an open API spec and I hope based on the previous tutorial of open API, you are able to understand the spec and you can easily identify the different paths, the method, how the request looks like and how the response looks like. So I'm assuming now you understand what is open API spec and if you have to create your own open API spec, you should be able to do it. Okay. And I will be adding this spec in the tutorial as well. So feel free to access that. And if you need to modify a few things, feel free to do that. And if you still have questions on open API, I will still recommend you to check out the tutorial that I was going through in the previous section. So let's go ahead and read through this open API spec. So first thing is this open API spec has two operations defined. One is a get operation and the other one is a post operation. Let's look at each line by line here. So first tag that I've defined is a open API tag and I'm telling the version of the open API. Then I'm using an info tag and inside of this info tag, I'm specifying the title of my API, which is this is the name of my API, a small description I have given. You can keep it blank as well. Then I have defined this path tag. So the indentation is very, very important. Okay. So this is the most important part here. So path is there. And then inside of the path, the first thing that you have defined is this. So there is an operation. It is a get operation. This is the endpoint here. It's a takes in a parameter. You can see here, this is not a query parameter. If query parameter is defined separately, Query parameter will never be added onto the path, right? This is a path parameter and you are saying the name of the parameter is ID and the type is string and it is a required one. So you have set it up to true. Okay. So you have defined this. Then if you look at the response, if you remember, you definitely have to do one status code minimum of one. And here you are defining the 200 status code and you can add a 400 also. So this 200, what you're saying is this, this particular method returns you a type of JSON and what the JSON looks like, it is of the type object and it contains these following properties. So the API is returning all of these values. Now it's up to the consumer of this API, which of this information you want to consume and the rest you can ignore it. So let's say out of this whole response, even though the API is returning me everything, the client is only interested in first name, last name, salary, date of birth, etc. So here inside of this, I have defined this schema. Currently in this open API spec, I am not using components. I am not using that references and all that. I've copy pasted whatever it, the whole API is returning and defined it as the type string. Now the easy way to do it, if you remember the two calls that we did get and a post from the get request, I've copied that open API spec that generated. So now the other path, if you see, if you scroll down, this is your post. And if you remember post takes in few parameters, you have to pass the first name, last name, the ID. So I am defining my schema over here. I am saying this is a post call. I have given the, the operation ID that, okay, this is the name of the operation. You can change the name of the operation as well. Here I'm going to call it as, or we can call it as retrieve employee by ID. And uh, this operation, I'm going to call it as Again, I'm going to use the word Deepika so you can you can see the difference between when it actually creates those operation. I'm going to say Deepika create new employee. So this is the operation ID, basically the name of your operation. Now you're defining the request body and here you have defined your schema. It is of the type object and you are saying that I'm expecting a first name, last name, salary and employee ID. 
and all of this you have specified here as true so the request body is this required is for request body you're saying this is required and now you are defining your response of this particular endpoint and you have specified one status code which is 200 here you are telling that the response it is of the type json and it is going to have these three things now how do i came up with all of this if you remember when i specified the post call this is the open api that it came up with all i did was i copy pasted from here and i added it over here okay so basically this particular open api is a combination of this get and the post simple as that but now you can understand, you can read through this open API based on my overview of open API that I've given to you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this whole thing and we will go over to Salesforce. Now I'm logged into my client application. Let's get rid of all of these different tabs. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. And now I'm logged into my application here. If you remember in this open API, nowhere I have given the endpoint yet, right? You can see here, nowhere I've defined my source system so far. You could explicitly say your server URL, but we have not defined any of those. Now I am going to under external services. The way to come here is you go ahead and type in your quick find external services. And then you come here and you click on add an external service you see this button you click here and now you have two options select an api source from api specification or from mulesoft so right now we are not using mulesoft we are going to click on from api specification basically you are telling that okay we will provide the api specification hit the next here external service name now you can provide your own external service name you can say dipika source app source employee three and description we're not giving it now service schema and select a name credential so over here this is where the name credential comes handy so that the whole connectivity part you have already done the server URL, everything you have defined, your authentication parameters you have defined. So you don't have to define them again in your open API spec. So here I'm going to choose, this is my name credential. So this is going to have the source system information, how to authenticate yourself, how to authorize, everything is defined in my name credential. Okay. Now here in the service schema, I am going to choose the complete json okay this is where i'm going to say i'm going to say i don't want from url or anywhere this is my complete json and i'm going to paste my whole open api spec over here this whole thing i'm going to paste it and save and next and this open api when we provide it it automatically read through that open api and basically it saw that there are two operations in that open api one is this one the pika create new employee and this is the other operation if you go back this is nothing but your operation id one is this one and if you go again if you scroll down this is your second operation so it has exactly copied both these things and then your input parameters if you look at this create new employee this is the body and this is it this input parameter only takes id so all of this is basically it is reading your open api and if you this if you look at the pika create this is your body this is your request body and in the case of the get there is only one parameter you're passing which is id and output parameters in this case it is going to give you the 200 status code response code and default here it is this one and then we're going to hit the next. So automatically read your open API, figured out how many operations are there and all of that. And we are finished. So now we have manually created this external service. Once you have added this external service, if you go over to Apex classes, you will see another list of dynamic apex classes got created and this is this complete list it is completely this whole list is created now you can call these actions 
from your flow. So we are no longer calling these two. These two were created based on HTTP callout. Now we are not doing HTTP callout. We manually created the external service. Behind the scene, it created your Apex classes. And now you can invoke these actions, the operations that you have from your flow. How to do that? We are going to talk about it in the next tutorial. I'm going to see you then. Thank you so much.